Howdy, Tinker Nerds. This is the comment show for my how to... Let's fly a drone. Um, communications failed. The controls are on auto. This is an emergency. We have an unidentified flying object on radar 004. This is a world crisis. Everyone is in danger. Duck and cover. Send out troops immediately. Come in, Blue Leader. Target detected. Stay on target, Red Leader. Request permission to launch missiles. Permissions granted. Missiles launched, sir. Missiles landed in the comment show, sir. I repeat, the missiles have landed in the comment show. That just happened, didn't it? Does it work without the app open? So in the initial version of the app that I created, you can open it up, connect to the smartwatch, and continue to let it run. You can even open up other apps in front of it, and it will still connect just fine. But if you kill it or close out of it, then yes, it's going to lose connection. But feel free to write your own Android app that can allow for that functionality. I have iOS. How can I connect my iPhone to the smartwatch? All you have to do is write an iOS app for it, and the Apple Swift programming language is a pretty easy one to learn. The only problem is that to get the app on your iOS device, you either have to sideload it through jailbreaking your device or sign up to become an Apple developer, which is a $100 buy-in. Thanks a lot, Apple. Where are the call and text notification blocks in App Inventor? You first have to drag out the call and text components on the design side, and then that will give you the blocks that you can use on the programming side. I suggest you hook up a flyback diode. Whenever you're connecting most motors, you should definitely put that in as an option. But this motor was so small and required such little power that I decided it wasn't necessary for this first draft. However, I'll probably put it into the final design. I prefer to buy a cheap smartwatch. Again, this is the engineering mindset versus the consumer mindset. It's fine to just go out and buy stuff, but the desire to know how things work, the curiosity to look beyond the surface of things, and the knowledge that comes from making things yourself, that's where the value is. And in my opinion, the value that comes from that knowledge outweighs whatever you paid to just buy it. What about battery status display and charging? How hard is that? If you know how to code, then it's not going to be too difficult to add that functionality to your project. There's even a GitHub library out there that does most of the legwork for you. Towards the end, it says, Smartwatch Play will sit. You all know that I'm notorious at misspelling words. And since I've changed things up on my channel, I haven't really had time to send my videos off for review. But hopefully, once things start to settle down, I can start doing that again. However, it really impressed me that more than half of the comments I received were about a misspelled word that was almost eight minutes into the video. That means that most of you had to watch the video 90% of the way through just to notice that. Maybe I'll just continue misspelling stuff at the end of my videos just to get people to watch it all the way through. I'm a terrible person. So, in the time between the last comment show and this comment show, I've crossed the 400,000 subscriber benchmark. 400,000 subscribers! Seriously, thank you all so much for being a part of that. And as tradition, that means it's time for another contest. Last year, when I crossed 300,000 subscribers, I did an Instructables contest, which I think went really well. So I may end up doing that again. However, it may take a month or two for me to get things organized with them before we can actually hold the contest. But I'll keep you guys posted as soon as I find out. All right, everyone. Thanks again for all the support and the comments, and I will see you all next week.